Max, hey, congratulations on your new film, Paradise. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very excited. But slightly terrified. Very excited. Though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It is a very fun movie. So you should be excited that uh, the world got is having a chance to see it. But we have to hear it from you is uh, where the original story actually came from. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's sort of a long saga, but I'll give you the quick version. Um, Like about like 10, you know, when when Obama got reelected, there was a very silly petition uh, from the state of Texas to secede from the union. And then there was a petition from the city of Austin to secede from Texas. And we started thinking about like this idea of like, oh, well, would that become like the Wild West? Like what would happen? It would be modern technology. And so then we were like, oh, we should do like a, a an anti-colonial kind of punk Western. And then everything spiraled from there. You know, then, then you know, one of the beauties of writing and rewriting uh, with my lovely writer, Tony, is things change and things evolve and, and become all new. And so we wound up with this kind of punk Western set out in a tropical island and that was much better than the original idea, which was not great. But <laughs> now here we are. <laughs> so, so you, so you brought in your uh, writing partner, uh, T- Tony, in, into mm-hmm. this. How, how do you work with them um, with, with with the story? Because, uh, because you know, this this in their own way, it's almost like a modern western. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were wanting to feel that way. So, thank you for uh, affirming that. Uh, but I've known Tony for a long time. Um, we went to school together and he's always been an amazing writer, a really capable filmmaker. And I've always wanted to work with him uh, on you know bigger projects. And so I had this rough outline, very loose for what this movie could be. And I went to Tony, I said, hey, look, if I wrote this, if I sat down and wrote this, it would not be great. It would be sort of grim and, and a little self-serious and it wouldn't be quite right. And I need you to bring yourself to this. I need you to bring sort of the the quirks and the joy and your love of character to this in a way that is going to be something I'm incapable of. Uh, and he really, I mean, obviously he showed up, he did his job and nailed it as far as I'm concerned. But it was, um, you know, it was a kind of lovely process. He's, we have a, a pretty good shorthand. We've known each other for so long that it's easy for us to talk. So that was a very nice writing process of allowing him to go and script and then me coming in and having notes and having thoughts and we would discuss and then he'd go and he'd write and we'd come back and, you know, we'd sort of iterate over time. Um, but it was very about like kind of sanding away edges and tacking on new things and seeing what worked. So, so tell us about the decision to keep the idea of a six shooter into a, into mm. your. Well, our real thing, I mean, we, you know, we wanted to make a Western, um and there is something kind of deeply embedded in like the american existence of like what does the six shooter mean right this is the frontier this is sort of lawless america this is the west um but it also the underlying thing there is that this is um gun violence that has has conquered you know the rest of the country um you know, the six shooter allowed us to expand West and take over and become casually militarized. Um, and so we wanted, I wanted that to be a, a visual metaphor that kind of ran through of being like, look, this thing has sort of heroic, iconic, classic aesthetics. But the underlying truth of that thing is that this is what destroyed a lot of indigenous peoples, conquered land, took land, uh, and gave a lot of power to wealthy white men now this all leads up to uh your your uh, main uh you know protagonist ella mm-hmm. and um t- tell us uh what 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 did ella to you you know kind of represent because you know she to to us she's like a almost seems like a very young uh very rebellious uh type type of girl but she's very talented in, in her own way yeah and you know um you're spot on. Look, Ella is a lot of my anti-authoritarian leanings, a lot of my more when I was younger, a lot of my youthful anger. Um, you know, she's the punk that that we all sort of idolize a little bit. Right. There's that cool punk who's like so badass and doesn't doesn't care uh, and is willing to throw caution in the wind. Um, but we wanted to give her, you know, a history in this place. Right. That even if you were an anti-authoritarian punk if you grew up in gun culture you grew up in gun culture 
and that's her life. Uh, and so we needed her to be capable with a, with a six shooter, which she needed to have that kind of steel on her hip feel, um, you know, in the way that classic cowboys are, you know, you've got so many great anti-authoritarian quick draw cowboys out there. Um, I go back to, uh, for a few dollars more, a lot, you know, lovely, weird anti-heroes in that movie. Um, and so we wanted her to kind of fit these two roles of like rebel, but also icon. So finding the right actress to play Ella, um, how did you land on um, Patricia? Oh, well, I mean, I'd seen Patricia's work in sex education before and was already a huge fan. Um, and so uh, we, my cast directors were like, look, we can get it to her and we can kind of make this all happen. Hey, get good casting directors. Trust your casting directors. I love casting directors. Um but they they really helped me kind of navigate like what that process was going to be and got to Patricia and, and we're communicating with her people. And she was just down. She read the script and she was excited and she wanted to play this character and embody it. And um, and I was just so blessed. Right. Like I, I was I knew that if she said yes, I was in that I didn't have to worry about me ever. I was just like, if she says yes. Uh, and she did, which so lucky me. <laughs> You know what is actually kind of funny. You, you're, you're, you're my back-to-back uh, -back, um, interviews with with directors who credit to casting directors as a huge part of production. And and you know, I, I was talking to someone yeah. about directors making that as a category. <laughs> for, so stunts so it, next. I want casting directors and stunts. Then I'll be happy. Ah oh, man, uh, two groups of people who I like love more than anything: casting directors and stunt people. Oh my god, they're the best. Well then, let let let's jump on to the stunts part uh, because you you know as as a director, sounds like you you're crediting your stunt your stunt team and every everybody else on in this film because there is plenty of action in this film. Oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah, lots of action. And we wanted we wanted fun weird you know kind of chaotic action in this movie, and uh, yeah, our stunt coordinator Nita Larioza is awesome and like handled us and the cast so well, you know. This is my first feature. I've directed some stunts before, but I'm not like an old hand. And he was just like, here's how we're going to do it. Here's how we're going to shoot it. Here's how it's going to be safe, but exciting. You know, here's how much time it takes, set expectations, you know, all that stuff. Um, and he had a team of 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 stunt performers who were who were excellent and, and game. You know, stunts are hard. You, nothing is fake, right? Like there are safe ways to do it, but if you're going to fall down, you're falling down. You know, maybe there's pads, stuff like that, but you're going to get bruised. You're going to get scraped. And you know, they got to do it a bunch of times in a row. So they, they go through it. Um, and he was great at just doing it all and working within us. And again, we made an indie film schedule that are tight. We didn't have a week to, to film a fight scene, you know, you do it in a day. Uh, and so you have to be, um, tight about what it is you're getting, how you're getting it. You can't really waste footage. Uh, and so, yeah, also watching stunt performers work is the coolest thing in the world. Like just sitting there at a monitor and be like, look at them go. Look how fun they are. It's great. It's the best. Um, so yeah, it was a real joy working with that whole team. Well, certainly that you you had a lot of um, you know, fun fun in this, especially your uh, directorial debut. But uh one 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 last thing uh, be before you uh before you go is yeah. uh how much training did you have uh, Patricia? do you know in regards of uh gun gun play because you know that's that's not easy and then I, and i was wondering if you sent her to some kind of cowboy camp or something like that so sort of uh we had her do a fair amount of training um so when she came uh it's hard to do training in the uk there are some people who do it but you know obviously gun laws in the uk are much stricter than they are in the u.s well done. Um, but it's a lot harder to find gun trainers. So when we brought her out for prep, um, we had brought a gun trainer um, with us to Hawaii. One of Nito's stunt team members is a professional gun trainer. So he did daily sessions with Patricia to get her on quick draw, to get her on, you know, flipping, putting it back in the holster, to get her hands just strong. You know, cocking those guns is hard. It's really hard. There's a lot of pound pressure, um, you know, to cock a hammer and even just to pull a trigger. Um, so getting her just in a place where she could do that so casually, 
Uh, and by the end, she had like calluses on all of her hands. She was like, they were so hard. Um, so we did that. And then we also, you know, we took her um, out to a shooting range uh, so that she could understand kind of what it was, what the reality of it was. Um, she'd never fired a gun before. Uh, and, you know, what is the kickback? What does it feel like? What is the weight of, a, you know, of a gun? What is, you know, just all the ins and outs of it. So we had a really lovely um group of people at the range who were walking her through training and doing that stuff as well. Um, so yeah, she did a lot. She did like a lot. And, you know, every day after shooting, she would go home and like do her hand workouts and like do her practice and do her stuff. She was dedicated. Well, you know what? It, it, it adds the aesthetics to, to the film. And that that's why, that's why paradise is such a fun film because of uh, all the little things that you actually add into it. So Max, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for carrying this conversation with us. Uh, everyone should definitely watch uh, Paradise because this is this is like a guilty pleasure movie. A lot of people will enjoy this. Good. That's all I want it to be. Have fun. Enjoy it. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you. Next time.